Today we are doing a technical breakdown of the Die M3 and FL21 engine. Die released the M3S in early 2018 and later revised the platform with the M3 Plus in the same year. Updates included a soft tip bolt, a billy wing trigger, a slap ASA, ULS2 barrel, a 4th gen eye pipe, and a revised solenoid manifold. Which has a smaller port for the forward stroke of the bolt to slow down the bolt's acceleration. The soft tip bolt, new eye pipe, and manifold were specifically designed to improve paint handling. Note that the soft tip bolt and eye pipe are really the upgrades you want if you have a stock M3S as the solenoid manifold's impact is rather minor. John Chambers is the brain behind Dai's flagship M3, and the loved by many DSR. But focusing on the M3, it is driven by the FL21, a balanced spool with a chamber sensing valve, a valve that functions uniquely to anything else available. So something to note is that it's chamber sensing versus breach sensing. Uh, examples of breach sensing is are the IV core, the gamma core, the clone 5 engine. Uh, what you'll expect from a chamber sensing valve is that it responds quicker. Uh, it acts very much like a regulator piston as it's responding to a drop in chamber pressure which allows it to act quicker when you compare it to a breach sensing valve which uses the back pressure from the shot uh, and you have to wait for that air to run down the valve and to shift the valve forward. We're gonna look at the marker in a holistic manner. So let's start with the routing. The layout has a rather conventional and sort of dated setup. Air travels from the ASA, makes its way down the left side of the body to the front grip where the high pressure regulator is. Regulated air is routed to the solenoid and shot chamber. Sounds simple enough, but due to the location of the HPR, Design requirements of the valve, solenoid function, chamber feed plus bolt feed, and obvious lack of macro line, it created some routing challenges, which were addressed in an impressively clean manner. So what is zoom in? I created a diagram breaking down the circulation of air. Again, starting from the ASA, tank pressure air travels through the ASA and up the rear grip. Here the air travels down the left side of the marker towards the front grip or high pressure regulator. Air leaving the Hyper 6 per reg is brought down to approximately 115 psi. Air enters this path down the right side of the body where you'll find this rod. This rod allows for a unique pass for air to travel through. The first section of this rod leads air through or around the outer diameter and into this port through the body, entering the solenoid. This air will be used to drive the bolt forward and rearward. Traveling through the solenoid, it will eventually lead through a mirroring port back to the second section of the rod and feed the shot air chamber. Something to note is that the solenoid selectively feeds the shot chamber, similar to what you'll find in PE's IV core markers. Back to the first section, there's a small hole. This hole allows for air to travel down the inner diameter of the rod, bypassing the second seal and supplying the rear valve chamber. This is a constant supply that is pushing the valve forward. There's a spring located behind the valve pushing it forward as well. The integration of the rod for directing airflow was quite clever here. Dai did not want to move the location of the HPR from the front grip to the frame or ASA like how it is on the DSR. This posed quite a few challenges and the result is the routing you see implemented here. Something that is very unique as it has never been done before is that the pilot valve in the solenoid is supplied by the shot air chamber which makes it the first pneumatically timed solenoid circuit on the market. Typically air is supplied directly from the regulator and into the pilot valve. So let's take a closer look at how the marker cycles. At rest, the bolt is being pushed into its rear position. The solenoid is allowing air to supply the shot air chamber. When the shot chamber is filled, the valve core is being forced rearward, as there is a rearward dominance due to the rear number 15 seal. Though they're equal in pressure, surface area on the shot chamber side is greater, causing a rear bias due to the aforementioned number 15 seal. So now let's take a look at what happens when the trigger is pulled. The pilot valve actuates, the spool in the solenoid shifts forward, air holding the bolt rearward is vented out from the bottom of the solenoid manifold, 
The air has been redirected to the port to shift the bolt forward. The shot chamber supply is sealed off and isolated. The bolt all the way forward clears the end of the valve, allowing the shot chamber air to dump through the face of the bolt, propelling the ball forward. Unlike the way the breach sensing valves in Ivy Core, Clone 5, and Gamma Core work, which uses the back pressure to activate the valve, the valve core on the FL21 acts as a regulator. Since the fire air chamber is venting and losing pressure, this causes the bias of the valve to flip and become forward dominant thanks to the force from the spring plus rear chamber pressure. The valve shifts forward to seal the tail of the bolt, capturing whatever air is left in the shot air chamber, which is approximately 40 psi per cycle. To all times out, the spool in the solenoid shifts back, air pushing the bolt forward is vented through the front of the manifold, air is redirected to the front of the bolt pushing it rearward, and supply is open to the shot air chamber once again, pushing the valve core rearward. This engine is quite the departure from the fuse bolt, an engine die has been recycling for more than a decade. The FL21 is an LPR less balanced spool valve that is incredibly efficient and reliable. They took the route of making a plug and play marker that doesn't require any tinkering and will just work. The shot is quite snappy compared to the fuse bolt, but maintains a smooth shot. The recoil acts horizontally into your shoulder. So this was my technical breakdown of the Die M3 and FL21 Volt. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. As you can kind of see from all the diagrams, I went a little crazy with it. Uh, but I honestly feel this is a really uh, underappreciated marker that deserves a lot more love from the paintball community and is just really misunderstood. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys found this informative. Of course, if you guys have any questions, leave them down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.